Hi everybody and thank you so much for joining me here at the Art Life YouTube channel. My name's Mrs B and I'm here today to teach you all about claymation. First, I'll talk through all the steps that you need to get ready to create your own claymation video. I'll let you know what app to use and also how to get ready for filming. There's lots of different steps to get ready, including creating your characters, creating a storyline and creating a setting for your filming. So I'll go through that now with you and in future videos, I'll teach you how to create your own stop motion claymation as well as edit it and add sound. So come with me today and we'll get started to create our very own claymation video. My little caterpillar guy and he's the character in my video but I'll give you some tips and some tricks in how to create your own storyline so you can come up with your own claymation video. Stay tuned there's heaps to come. Hello and welcome to a very exciting video. I'm here today to talk to you about stop motion clay animation or claymation. Now, there are two parts to what I'm gonna teach you today. Firstly, the stop motion aspect. Stop motion just means that you're not filming. You're not filming a moving object. You're actually taking multiple photos, hundreds of photos. Now, these photos all get put together to then create an animation. Animation is essentially the illusion of movement. An animation comes in many different forms, cartoons, there's uh, computer animations, which are more digitalized. There's lots of different ways to create an animation. And the illusion of movement means that you're tricking someone's eye to make them believe that something is moving. Now, there's really successful ways of doing this and ways that don't really trick anyone. So I'm gonna teach you some really important steps to get ready to create your own stop motion claymation. So today I'm gonna be showing you using a form of clay called plasticine. Now, plasticine is fantastic because it's really bendy, it's movable, and it really helps when creating a claymation because you can move your character and your plasticine in different ways fairly easily. Now, in the event you don't have any plasticine, you can use pretty much anything for an animation. You could draw. That will take a while, but you could definitely do it. You could use things like Lego to create little characters and move them around. The animation is gonna be a little bit more jerky because you can't necessarily bend the Lego, but it's still possible. Really, it is fairly open-ended. So whatever you have at home really could be used for your very own claymation. And I'd love to see some people that have gotten super creative with this idea. We'll get back to the plasticine soon. Now, I wanna go back to animation and the illusion of movement. This is a very, very simple animation. So I've drawn individual pictures on pieces of paper in my book here. Now, when I move them really quickly, hopefully this will work, it gives you an animation. Extremely simple, I know, but the idea is it's a ball bouncing up and down again with um, a ground there. So I've literally had to draw many, many different um, versions of this animation. And when put together, it tricks the eye or gives the illusion of movement, like this ball is actually moving. So we're gonna do a similar thing through photos. And we need to move our character, our plasticine character, many, many times taking many, many photos, putting them together to create an animation. So today is called pre-production.
and it pretty much means just getting ready for filming. We're not doing any filming today, or we're not taking any photos today, I should say, but we're planning. So you need to do a few things when it comes to planning. You need to consider what is your animation going to be about? So you need to think of a storyline. Now, this storyline needs to be fairly simple. Please don't think about something super complicated like the prince rescues the princess and then he gets captured and then he has to go to war and something like that will take you forever. And you'll see in the next video when we do production actually how long it takes to create a very small and short, short film. So we don't want an overly complex story. We want something realistic to what materials you have at home and the amount of time you have. So think of just something simple that your character might do. That brings me to who. So you need to think of your character. Who is your main subject? This character could be an animal. This could be a person. It could be a simple shape. Try not to think too complicated, but do try to think creatively, something that no one's really thought of before. They're the two things that we're gonna focus on first. So when we're doing our story today, I don't necessarily want you to consider what you would do if you were writing an English story. For example, we don't need to consider beginning, middle, end. So we just want something to happen, all right? So what can happen? Many things. For example, something as simple as a sun going behind the clouds. That's a simple animation in itself. And it's not an overly interesting story, but it is realistic for what we're doing today. You might consider a person walking down the street. You need to consider that something more complicated like this is tricky because you've got multiple things that you would need to move for each shot that you take. This is doable. It is just a little bit trickier. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. That's my design, my story. I'd love it if you come up with something different. Something as simple as a sphere or a ball rolling down the road and it gets stepped on and goes splat. These are the types of ideas I'm just trying to inspire you. So after you've come up with a very, very short story, you need to consider what you need to create in the way of a character. So if you're just doing this simple ball, that's fairly easy to create out of plasticine. If you're doing a person, that is a lot more complicated. The next thing you need to do is design what they're going to look like. This might mean just doing a quick sketch on a piece of paper considering what you might use and how you might create it. Remember, you need to be able to move your character really easily. So I'm just gonna do something simple. I'm not gonna give my um, caterpillar lots of little legs or anything, just because that will make it too fiddly. Uh, I wanna make him really cute with big eyes because I wanna give him some expression. I don't know what I'll use his antlers for. When it comes to expression, it is tricky to change the expression. So I'm just gonna keep it as a smile, I think. Now, another thing I need to consider creating is his cocoon that he'll go into, and then the butterfly that he turns into. So I've got three different things I need to create for my story. I've given myself quite a task to do. So we're gonna do that soon. Another thing you need to consider before doing any filming is the setting. So that means the backdrop or what is around. So you can create something simple, but for example, if I were to take a photo just where I am at the moment in my kitchen, the background would be my fruit bowl, my sink and things like that. You don't want 
too much information in the background. And that's why I suggest finding something that can go behind and create a bit of a set. So I've got just a piece of cardboard here that I'm gonna use and I'm going to decorate using just materials I have at home to give context to my story, but also sort of hide the information that's around me and make it a really visually interesting movie for people to watch. So that's another thing you need to consider is what you're going to put in your setting or essentially your background. So once you've sorted out these three things and created everything, that's when you're ready to watch the next video, which will be me teaching you how to actually go about filming, which is called the production stage. But spend some time now creating. I'm gonna show you how I create mine using plasticine and get everything set up ready to go. You'll also need to download the stop motion app in your app store. And I show you a version that will need iMovie as well. So you don't need those today, but just remember you will need to download those prior to the production stage. Cool, I'm gonna create my character. This plasticine is a great pack. It's really cost effective and I get it from Zart where I get all my art materials. There's a link below if you'd like to follow that to purchase your own. And I've also included a 10% off discount code if you'd like to purchase it through me. Ooh, look at all the colors. So when you've got some plasticine, you'll notice that it's really bendy like this. That's why it's perfect for a claymation. It doesn't dry out. It will stay bendy and movable. And you can change the position based on what you're wanting your character to do. So make your character really strong so it doesn't fall apart. I'm just gonna make a really simplified version of my caterpillar, um, sort of like this, because I want it to move like that. And if I create too many bits and pieces, it might be too tricky. So I'm just gonna neaten this up a little bit and this can be my character. You can sort of mold it with your fingers like that, make it nice and smooth. Because I'm not making the body of my caterpillar overly detailed, I thought I might just add some details with some lines here. So I'm just pinching a small amount of plasticine and rolling it on my surface. And then what I can do is add it to my caterpillar like this, push it down. And it just will make him look a little bit more interesting than just a plain old green thing. Wonderful. So that's the basic design of my caterpillar. Now, I went to make eyes, but then I remembered that my daughters have some little eyes like this, a part of their Play-Doh set. So be creative with what's around your house. You might not have white and black plasticine for eyes, so you're gonna have to consider <laughs> what you could use instead. So I feel like that looks quite good. There he is. What a cutie. All right. That is my first character. Now I need a cocoon. Now I want my caterpillar to crawl into my cocoon and then I'm gonna wrap the cocoon around. So for now, all I need for this character or this prop is a pancake. So that's done. All right, now I'm gonna make him as a butterfly. Now I'm working on the butterfly, which is the third of my characters. And I wanted everyone to recognize him as the same caterpillar. So I've created a similar sort of body with the details of the stripes. And now I'm just using some plasticine to create the wings. You can see here that different colors can be merged together really, really beautifully. If I kept, kept mixing, the colors would combine and the colors would change. But it's really just a matter of molding like this. And I've rolled it into a ball. And I'm going to flatten like a pancake, but I do need to split it in two for the bottom wings here. Now I'm sort of just molding with my fingers. You could also use some scissors or a knife to sort of cut the shape that you're after, but 
I, I find a lot easier just to mold with my fingers like this. So you really will get out what you put into this video. If you, you know, just kind of create something, you know, really lacking care and effort, um, that it will show in the production stage and in the final outcome. So I encourage you to really, um, yeah, show some effort and uh, creativity with this task. Way you can do that is by just adding details. It makes your video more visually appealing to uh, the viewers, which is, I guess, the aim. Now, this is what I've done for my character. And I'll say again, please, it is not, you know, my aim with this task is not to show you exactly what to do or what to copy. The idea is that you'll take this strategy and run with it on your own. So you will do your own version of this task. Your characters, I expect, would be different. Your story, I expect, would be different as well. Oh, he's so cute. My characters are now done. And I now need to use whatever I have around me to create a bit of a setting or background for my story. So as I said, I'm going to use this piece of cardboard as the backdrop for my movie. You can use whatever you have at home. I'm just going to colour in today with some pastels. And consider the type of environment that my story might be set in. Again, what you put in is what you'll get out. If you rush this, you may not, it may not turn out exactly the way you want. Now, you can use whatever you have. You can use paper and create a collage that will look really beautiful if you have some colored paper at home. Um, obviously, you can use textures. You can do a detailed drawing if you want something um, really detailed. If you don't have cardboard, you might choose to just um, stick some different pieces of paper together and stick it up against a wall so it sits, um, sits up nice and flat. You have to also consider the ground as well. So really, this all depends on what you have available to you. So I'm showing you what I've come up with, but I hope you're able to use some problem solving skills to create your own version. This is my basic background, but you could consider some other things you have around the house. I'm gonna stick on the pom-pom here as a sun to add some more detail to my garden. I'm gonna actually create some flowers and trees out of plasticine as well. Now, once you know what your story is and what everything's gonna do in your video, once you have made all your characters and your props that are needed, and you've created your setting, you are ready for production. So for example, this is my setting. I know what my story is and these are my characters. This is a prop I'll need as well. And my movie might look something like this. Once you're up to this stage, you are ready to watch the next video and begin production. So today, I really hope that I've prepared you to get ready to create your own claymation. I hope you feel really confident for the next video and doing some filming and getting everything put together for an awesome movie that's yours. Just a reminder to please give me a like if you'd like the video and also subscribe below because my future videos are all about putting your characters and storyline into a video.